Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. Today we're answering another one of your questions about uh, what does it look like when one of these things lands. 16 inch 50 caliber shell uh, has a range of about 23 land miles and uh, when it hits a target it is designed to explode and do a maximum amount of damage. What that looks like varies depending on the type of projectile. First off, they come in two separate flavors and everything else we talk about is just gonna be a variation of one or to other. So we've got a Mark 8 armor piercing shell and we've got a Mark 13 high capacity round. We've done a previous video where we talked about the types of projectiles for these guns. Uh, so check the link in the description below, go check that out. That goes into much greater detail than this one here. Basically, throughout the ship's career, there were two main types of projectiles they used, high capacity and armor piercing. The armor piercing one has a time delay fuse so that it can penetrate armor. And the high capacity one explodes on impact. The armor piercing one is supposed to be a little bit taller. Uh, realistically, the uh, projectiles inside the bullet shaped thing, uh, are, they're about the, the same size. Um, but both the high capacity and the armor piercing have windscreens on them that make them more aerodynamic. Now, in reality, this thing is shaped like a big bullet with a round head, and that gives it some penetrative ability. And then you see the indent here in this fiberglass replica. This shows what the windscreen on an armor piercing shell looks like. So inside there, this just keeps going to a rounded uh, head. And then this is, is pretty much just an empty cavern. So you've got your uh, projectile, the, the total thing, if it was full size, would be about six feet tall. Uh, maybe about four feet of that is the actual the bullet looking bit. For the armor piercing one, it has a super heavy nose uh, plug. The, the rounded piece is, is really solid. Uh, and that means there's only enough room for about 35 pounds of powder in the cavern uh, inside. That's called the bursting charge. So when the time delay fuse goes off after uh, 0.35 seconds, um, that explodes inside of a ship, hopefully, uh, which will do an amount of damage and the splinters from the shell casing will do more damage. Now, um, the high capacity round without that super heavy nose cone in there designed to penetrate things has 133 and a half pounds of powder in it. On average, there's a little bit of variance in these depending on the manufacturer, but 133 and a half pounds of powder. So it has a significantly larger bursting charge. It'll do a lot more damage, but it doesn't penetrate anything. So uh, here is some video from a spotting aircraft of a section of jungle in Vietnam, uh, probably in 1969, where Battleship New Jersey has bombarded. And you're gonna see some large craters and some small craters. These are from 16 inch and five inch rounds. And uh, the large craters have a diameter of up to 50 feet and a depth of up to 20 feet, which you can sort of make out in the, in the video. From, from the size, from the height, it's tough to see the uh, the scale of it. Sometimes these projectiles were used to defoliate trees to make a helicopter landing pad in the middle of the jungle and they can blow away trees within about a 200 foot radius, that's the, the uh, high capacity round, uh, and defoliate trees out another 300 yards uh, from that which means that you're gonna have a good flat area to land helicopters when you need something in an emergency, uh, and you're gonna have some good visibility out beyond that, uh, out to a reasonable range for your uh, M16s, your, your uh, Sweet 16 Mattel toys that you're using with the infantry and whatnot. So that happened a couple of times off Vietnam, that's documented. Uh, of course, these were used to destroy enemy installations and troop concentrations and things like that. Now, if it comes to a bunker, 
like something with reinforced concrete, you know, the high capacity round will explode on the surface, but that's not going to destroy it. Interestingly, the U-boat uh, pens in France, the French government hasn't destroyed those U-boat pens because there's so much reinforced concrete to protect them from British and American uh, strategic bombers. So it, it's impractical to destroy them. So they've converted them into museums and other things. Um, you, you just can't get rid of them. But maybe you've got a target you just have to get rid of. In that case, you can throw an armor-piercing shell at it. Now this can penetrate through more than a foot of armor plating. Uh, against reinforced concrete, it can penetrate as much as 30 feet which, if you're armoring your bunker with more than 30 feet of uh, reinforced concrete, odds are it's not near the surface with artillery and stuff sticking out that can damage uh, friendly forces in return. So uh, that's probably going to do you. Uh, if you've got more than 30 feet of reinforced concrete over your, your hard point, you can keep it. So. Um, this has massive penetrating capabilities if it hits one of those structures dead on. So, uh, what about when it hits armor plate? There, if it hits straight on, you might see that perfect round hole that you imagine, uh, which on the front of the armor plate looks like a, a pretty smooth hole. Uh, so, um, the picture that you're looking at now is a test the U.S. Navy did with their 16-inch guns. They recovered the 24-inch thick faceplate for turret armor cast for the Japanese uh, aircraft carrier Shinano. She was originally being built as a Yamato-class battleship, got for, converted into an aircraft carrier, and meant that they just had this uh, turret faceplate armor laying around. So the U.S. Navy recovers that, shoots a shell through it, uh, so the 16-inch shell can go through at least 24 inches of armor plate. Now that is at ridiculously close ranges. It's not expected battle ranges. Uh, and it is straight on. So this isn't typically what it looks like. But looking at the front of the plate, um, if it was a little bit thinner, you might see it caving in more. Here it's more of just like a hole punched in. Looking at the back of the plate, you've got what's called spalling, where the uh, back of the armor has splintered out. So much force from the projectile is imparted into the armor, which is brittle, that uh, stuff on the backside just breaks out and shatters. So not only is the shell, the bursting charge, and the splinters caused by this doing damage to your ship, but also um, shrapnel from your own armor plate is causing additional damage. But again, this is a test. This isn't really what it looks like in combat. From pictures of ships that survived the Battle of Jutland, we can see what um, these projectiles look like going through armor plate. And uh, you see that they often hit at an angle, so you tend to get more of uh, an elongated, oval-shaped hole in the armor. Otherwise, things tend to be similar. When a projectile like this hits armor, if it's of a certain thickness, beyond a certain range, the projectile might just shatter and dent the armor without punching through. Uh, or the armor will almost always deflect the shell. So the shell comes in at the armor plate like this, and as it's punching through, the armor causes it to deflect downwards or upwards, whatever way, based on where the projectile is coming at the armor from. It'll deflect and then um, even start to tumble. And at that point, your projectile loses most of its penetrative ability once it's uh, tumbling. Which means if you have not punched through the armored belt by that point, you're not going to if you're hitting it side on. If uh, you have punched through most of the other ship's armor though, the interior bits of the ship are relatively unarmored. Most of our decks are less than a half inch thick. So once you punch through, you can keep tumbling uh, that round and it just keeps turning the inside of the ship into larger and larger chunks of splinters as this thing, um, no longer making a 16 inch round hole, it's now making a four foot long elongated oval hole and all that steel that it's displacing as it punches through is joining it 
on this uh, journey through the enemy ship. And, and so you tend to see as it goes through lots of holes and perforations in the steel as it goes. And then at a certain point, it has just expended all of its energy and it hits and leaves a dent. And then that 0.035 time delay fuse goes off. This only happened a few times during World War II. And in most instances when it happens, the uh, vessel that is so hit is sunk. Um, so South Dakota takes a hit to one of her bar bats by a 14 inch of that. South Dakota's superstructure is peppered with eight inch and five inch and other uh, projectiles. And those leave a bunch of holes. It's not a particularly armored part of the ship. Uh, battleships like Karishima and TA and Bismarck that are absolutely uh, hit. We don't uh, get to examine that too much. Uh, there has been some examination of Bismarck's wreck of shell holes that are visible. And uh, obviously being two miles under the Atlantic, this is less than ideal examinations. Uh, and at the range and, and resolution that these um, ROVs are able to get this footage, it looks like a bunch of 14 and 16 inch wide holes in the ship. Uh, at that point, the British battleships were so close that the armor wasn't really doing anything. The shells were going through. Now, talking about how this thing tumbles and loses penetrative ability as it goes through armor plate, that's the whole reason why Iowa-class battleships have a multi-layered armor system with several thinner plates on the outside that this has to penetrate through. It's going to lose its nose cone. It might lose a lot of its velocity and start to tumble and deflect so that by the time it hits the main armored belt, it's not hitting it straight on. That belt's at an angle, the projectile's now tumbling, uh, and so hopefully that belt, which is pretty anemic at 12.1 inches, that, that's pretty light for uh, a battleship armored belt, especially in an age of 16 and 18 inch guns, uh, but at that point it should be enough to stop one of these. We just never got to find out in combat. American projectiles tended to have smaller bursting charges than many of their contemporaries. Do you think a 50 foot by 20 foot crater is big enough? Let us know in the comment section down below. Would you have made these projectiles with more powder and maybe less steel so they have less uh, penetrative ability? Let us know if you think that the US Navy did it right or if they were lagging behind their contemporaries in that. Also, let us know if you have any other questions. We love to make videos where we answer your questions. Uh, drop them in the comment section down below. We, I, I can't promise that we'll get to them anytime soon, but uh, if you leave us a donation, let us know in the donation that, uh, that you asked a question, we'll bump it up the, the order of priority. Battleship New Jersey receives operating support from the New Jersey Department of State and also from a number of other businesses and private individuals like yourselves. We really appreciate your continued support. There's a link in the description below for donations if you'd like to continue supporting us that way. You can also support the museum by liking, sharing, and subscribing so that more people find out about our channel and our content. Thanks for watching.